OK. So what I have here is f of x equals 2 cosine of x plus pi. So the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, when doing a problem like this is we want to find the all the important information. So the easiest thing that I like to do is find the amplitude first. And remember the amplitude is the absolute value of a. And when looking at a problem like this, sometimes it's also helpful to write kind of your standard form. Okay, So you can sometimes write the standard form of the function. That sometimes helps us remember, oh, what was a, what was b, what was c, how do I figure out all of this? So when I write the standard form of the function, to find the amplitude, remember the amplitude was the absolute value of a. So you take a look at your a, which is being multiplied by your function, and you could say, well, here I have the absolute value of 2, which is just going to equal 2. All right. Then the next thing we want to do is find the period. Now the period, remember, is going to tell us how long it's going to take for our graph to complete one cycle. And to find the period, what we do is we take 2 pi divided by b. So I take a look at this, and my b is going to be my coefficient of x, which in this problem we see we have a coefficient of 1. So therefore, I'm going to have 2 pi divided by 1, which equals 2 pi. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm making a graph, if you guys remember, when we talked at, if we looked at the parent graphs, you remember there was critical points we talked about, right? There was a maximum, a minimum, um, x-intercepts. Each one of those critical points were even distances between each other. They are the same distance, right? If you guys kind of remember, there are certain distances between each other. So once I determine what the period is, I want to determine the distance between my critical points. So what I'm just going to kind of write as my critical points. And to determine the distance between the critical points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my period, which in this case is 2 pi, and I'm going to divide it by 4. Because there's four critical points that we talked about for our sine and our cosine, uh, one period of our sine and cosine graph. So therefore, I'm able to figure out that the distance between my critical points is going to be pi halves. And I'll show you about when that comes, uh, when that's going to be helpful. Uh, when we start to graph. Then the last thing we talked about was the start and the end. Now we know that there's cyclical periods, right? There's infinite many periods of a graph. However, we want to start by graphing one period. So to do that, we're going to have a start and an end. And if you remember, the start and the end was what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever was inside your function, bx minus c equals 0. Well, in this case, all we have is x plus pi equals 0. So therefore, to solve for that, solve for x, I have x equals negative pi. So therefore, rather than usually, remember we always started, when we started graphing our parent functions, we started at 0. Well, now, to graph one period, instead of starting at 0, we're going to start at negative pi. And then, when we finish graphing the parent graphs, our parent graphs finished at bx minus c equals 2 pi. Well, in this function, our bx minus c is x plus pi equals 2 pi. So now to solve for x here, I have x equals pi. So therefore, the start of my first period that I'm going to graph is going to start at negative pi. And the end of my first graph is going to start at pi. So let's take a look at what this graph might look like, or what it's going to look like. All right. So the first thing is I'm going to make some intervals where my critical points are going to be. So I'm going to have 1, 2, uh, make those a little bit farther distance. Okay, Each one of these points is going to create a critical point, which could be a maximum, it could be a minimum, it could be an x-intercept. But at these intervals, I'm going to have my critical points. All right. So the first thing I like to do is I like to kind of graph sometimes the parent function so I can see exactly what my function looks like. And there's no difference in period here. Since my, my function has the same uh, period as the parent function, I'm gonna, you're going to kind of see it's not gonna, the graph is going to look kind of the same. So what we're going to have is, if you remember, the parent function for cosine had an amplitude of 1. That means it went up to 1, right? and it went down to 1. So the period, one period of the cosine graph started at 0, 1, uh, crossed, went down to negative 1, came back up, and then finished 
up at uh, 0, 1 again. Now remember, we also had critical points. Since the period was the same, my critical points were pi halves between each other. That means the distance from here to here was pi over 2, right? Well, that means the distance from here to here is also pi halves, which gives me that point is pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, if you guys remember, this is the exact same as the, when we graphed. I mean, this is what we did for the parent graph. And the reason why my intervals are the same is because we have the same period as the parent graph. But this is what the parent graph looks like. Do you guys kind of remember this, watching this and kind of dealing with it? So I graphed the period, or I graphed the parent graph. And what we notice is our first period started at 0, ended at 2 pi. However, for my graph, we have some transformations we're going to graph. So let's take a look at the transformations. Rather than having an amplitude of 1, I now have an amplitude of 2. That means my graph's going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. All right? The next thing that we notice about our graph, Michael, is that rather than starting the first period at 0, I'm going to start the first period at negative pi. Well, remember, the distance between our intervals is pi half. So where's negative pi? There's negative pi. Okay, So therefore, rather than starting at 0, I'm going to start at negative pi. I'm sorry. And then it actually has to go up to 2, right? Because that's the new amplitude. So now, here's my going to be my first point. To go to the next critical point will be here. Then the next critical point over, down, come back up. And now what I've done is completed one period. But usually what we like to do is make sure that we can complete at least two periods worth of length. So what I'll do is I'll complete an extra half period to the right and an extra half period to the left. So therefore, the next critical point is going to be an intercept and then go back down to negative 2. And then here, um, up at 2. So I'm going to go down and circle down over there. So does anybody have any questions? In red is the parent graph of cosine of x. And then what I graphed here is a change of magnitude. You can see the amplitude stretch the graph vertically. There was no change in period. So the amount of distance that it took for the graph to complete one cycle is exactly the same. Um, however, the start and the end point do change. All right? Any questions? Cool? All right.